Hi, I'm Ken Birch, North Dakota State Seed Commissioner. I've been asked by the Northern Food Grade Soybean Association to visit with you a little bit today about identity preserve programs, some of which we offer through our agency, and I'll get onto that in a minute. We'll talk a little bit about the basics and the technicalities of what you might use on your farm or business and why you might use an IP program. We talk a little bit about what is IP and take a look at this slide. All of those definitions are reasonable. Look particularly at the middle one, preserving the genetic and or physical identity of a product by providing traceable identification of a field crop from planting through production, storage, handling, and delivery of that product. And that's really the key definition of what IP is. IP is useful for products that are food grade, especially soybeans right now, or really anything that's value added or containing a specific trait or demanding of segregation from other commodities. In food grade soybean production or any other IP production system, the key question is, what does your customer want? We try to build IP programs, or our objective is to build an IP program that works for you based on your customer needs. We try to design and execute a program that really delivers on your customer expectations. This slide might look like an advertisement, and it really isn't intended to be, but it's us talking about an IP program from the North Dakota State Seed Department perspective. Ours is a third-party program, independent in nature, customer-client-driven. In other words, we try to customize for our clients, you, a program that works for your needs. Our programs are AOSCA approved program requirements. AOSCA is the Association of Official Seed Certification Agencies, and if you use our program, its baseline is AOSCA approved. And that program is used throughout the entire United States uh, in a number of different states. The program is built on seed certification principles. I think that's really important. Those are pretty stringent, and I think they work. There's a certain value to using AOSCA and NDSDSD programs, and we hear that periodically from our clients in that a – Government agency logo is not a bad thing. Uh, you use our program. You can use that standard AOSCA Identity Preserved logo you see on the bottom right side of the screen. And again, everything that we do is an extension of seed certification principles, and those are very stringent by nature. IP programs by nature are a combination of inspections and audits of procedures and documenting of all of those that lead to the final product evaluation. It's also a partnership between a certifier and a company to deliver on all of these requirements. The success of any IP program is predicated on treating the product with care throughout the process and preserving the integrity of that crop from start to finish. At planting, the applicant has a lot of responsibilities in this regard with care of equipment and making sure that that equipment is cleaned thoroughly between crops and even between varieties so that you don't contaminate the seed source at the outset. Seed source must be eligible. Uh, in other words, we need to have a variety description for that seed source to make sure that we can perform the inspections accurately. And there are some land requirements involved as well. You certainly don't want to plant a food grade soybean behind another soybean crop and certainly not one that was a GM crop the previous year. In an IP program, just as in seed certification, you'll provide an application to our agency that outlines a number of different things that are really checkpoints to the process. Land eligibility issues, what was the previous crop, like we just talked about in the previous slide, what is the seed source and the variety description for that seed source, the legals on the legal description, where's the field, the field size, the planning date, and any other number of other issues that we will need to generate the information for our field inspection form or report that we use with our agency and that we'll also provide to your inspector if we're doing split inspections. Once we have the application at our agency and we've distributed those inspection forms, both to your company and to our inspectors, we'll perform one to two field inspections on that crop, depending again on what your customer requires. We'll do a visual exam for genetic purity of the variety to make sure that the variety that is applied for is pure in the field and doesn't contain a number of off types. 
and we'll look at the varietal identity to make sure that the variety that was applied for is the one that's in the field. We'll look at the presence or absence of weeds and isolation from other inseparable crops. And that's really a function of seed certification as well because you have to be able to isolate those fields. Those reports will be provided to your company, to the grower, and we'll keep a copy as well. If your company self-inspects part of the acreage, and you will, we'll need to have a copy of the inspection report from your inspector as well. The harvest, the transport practices after field inspection then become the next critical factors in this whole process. In seed certification, we talk a lot about contamination points, and some of those are really most critical at the handling, storage, and conditioning parts of the process. We've already performed an approved facility inspection on your operation to make sure that you've got the equipment and the cleanability within that structure that it'll take to keep the integrity of that product in place. At planting, harvest, transport, storage, cleaning, and loading, we can't emphasize enough how important it is to maintain the integrity and control any potential contamination that may impact the final product that you're trying to produce in your IP program. Sampling and testing is also an important part of any IP program. An accurate and representative sample needs to be taken at your facility off the conditioner of the product that we're certifying through this IP program. And in a food grade soybean product in particular, the minimum testing requirements that you can expect are a hylum check to make sure that this is the final variety determinant and that we're accurate on variety. Your customer may actually want additional tests. And if it's a GM-free product, for example, those tests can also be performed at the state seed department. And they might be as simple as a strip test to determine yes or no if there's any GM content. Or they could be a much higher end test like a PCR that's quantifiable to a very, very low percentage, low level presence of any GM traits. The last step in an IP process, if a third-party certifier can document that your company has performed all the activities correctly and we and our inspections have determined the same thing, we can issue label for that product. If all the checkpoints have been satisfied, you simply make a request for labels and those labels might be a tag or a certificate like you see on the right side of the screen that provides information to your customer on what has been certified. It'll be the product, the variety name, the lot number, the year produced, the date that we issue the certificate, and the quantity of product that's being shipped under this particular shipment. And again, if all those checkpoints have been satisfied and everything is good, labeling is the last step in the process. The thought might have crossed your mind that this probably isn't free, and it's not. Every agency that does third-party certification of any type, including IP, has a fee schedule, and so do we. Field inspection costs $2 an acre if we inspect, $1 an acre if you inspect, because we've got to audit all of those and spot check your inspections. There's a final certification fee that really covers overhead and running programs. There are testing fees, and we talked about some of the tests involved in an IP program. The Hylum check is $10. GMO strip test, which is a lower end GM test, is $70 and a GMO PCR is 230. That's a high-end test and it's costly. There are audit and sampling fees that are really based on other programs that we run in the state seed department that are USDA, uh, good handling practice, good agricultural practice audit programs, and we've made those fees similar across program lines. There are some limited tag or document fees that are associated with running the program. And there's the facility inspection fee, the approval process for facilities that we've talked about throughout. I thought it might be instructive to do just a quick example of what you might expect. Uh, in this example, if we've got a 200-acre IP production going on your farm or with your company, you will probably do half of the inspected acres. We'll do half, so those are split. The field inspection fee would be about $300. Final certification fees, again, at $0.04 cents a bushel. Under the estimate of a 40-bushel clean seed yield would be about three twenty. dollars Testing fees, I put in some pretty high-end tests here. You do the Hylum anyway, and I threw in the PCR, just so that we're very, very conservative on estimating this. 
audit and sampling fees. And again, we can't predict what that might be, but I went on the high end and said it takes three hours to do the audits, the samples, all of those sorts of things. And that's pretty high too at 276. We issue four bulk certs and that's high because you'll probably ship most of this under a single shipment. And again, the facility inspection fee is $100. Under this example, you've got a 1286 total, which makes it 16 cents a bushel. Again, I think that's on the high, high end. If we had to do this under normal circumstances, I think you could reasonably expect costs that resembled something like 10 to 15 cents a bushel to run an IP program. In summary, IP programs should be an assurance to your customer that the product you've raised has been produced under a recognized and verifiable IP regime with pretty strict product requirements. IP products don't carry a guarantee. It's simply a verification that the requirements have been met at each checkpoint and snapshot in the process and shouldn't be confused with some sort of a guarantee. This is a quality assured product that you've had a third party do the inspections on and that should offer some level of assurance to your customers that the product has added value. My belief is we probably haven't seen this in terms of the tip of the iceberg just yet. There are a host of other IP related food products out there that we'll probably, even in North Dakota, see more and more work on in the future. And that applies to food grade products for humans and pets. And I think the driving force behind most of this is this whole natural food business that we hear repeatedly. It's been a pleasure to visit with you about Identity Preserved Inspection programs and processes. Best of luck for you in implementing these or any other value-added production programs on your farm. Thank you.